Wassalamu ala Rasulullah. In the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the most compassionate, the most merciful. All praise and thanks are due to him and peace and blessings be upon his beloved Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. A few days ago, I was invited by a very nice group of brothers and sisters from this place. Their name is Salam Neighbor. They offered uh, some schools, high schools, Catholic schools, public schools to when they have the class of the religions of the world in the schools, when you want to talk about Islam, we would love to serve to give this. So they accepted many schools of them. So I was invited to be part of this group when the Q&A session comes. One of the questions that came to me, I will share the question with you, and I want to share with you what Allah guided me to answer so that if you face something similar, we might, inshallah, be able to deal with it in a wise way. The question was by a female student. She said, why in Islam, if there is someone who is very nice, very good, helping the poor, the needy people, giving the charity, but he is a non-believer in God, why he is not supposed to be in the paradise? Which is a common question, I think. He's a nice person. He is a good, by the way, he is a good, yes. He helps needy, poor, orphans, all that. But why he is not supposed to go to the Jannah? What I answer basically depends on two basic points. This is what I would love to share with you. The first point, I said, sister, thank you for your question. As you might guess, there are public school and Catholic schools. The majority of them, they are not Muslims. I said the first point, who told you in this point, our departure point, our criteria depends on good or bad. Our departure point is the respect of Allah. We don't start our judgment from whether this is good or bad between us. We start when judging someone, does this person, does this human, respect his Lord or not as his Lord wants. I said this is the first point, which is the attitude of respect. Is he responding to what Allah wants or he's doing what he wants in our criteria? I said, please keep this in your mind, then let's go to the second point. Second point is what I need, and I hope you will share this with your kids. I said, let's take the following simple example. Imagine that here in Canada, we heard about someone who is very well known as a Canadian person, very nice, giving charities like, for example, Bill Gates or Steve Jobs, billions of dollars for needy, orphans, nice, no harm, all the time. Everyone knows how nice he is. But, however, we discovered by chance through the intelligence forces, securities, that he himself, through his secret messages in his privacy, he hates Canada. Just a feeling. He hates Canadians. He has done nothing so far, just a feeling and attitude. And he would love to help any country to harm Canada if he was offered anything, he would love to be part of this thing against Canada. Imagine, no action yet, just a feeling and attitude. But this was discovered by the Caesars, for example. Okay, they discovered. I said, are you going to respect him? The answer was, no. definitely no. But why? He does a lot of good things. He's helping the people. I add now for you. Is there any logical Canadian who will nominate him to be the president? No way. No way! But by the way, he's doing a good things. Who cares? Let this good things be for him. I don't care. He hates Canada. He hates Canadians. Even though he has done nothing, his attitude is enough to cancel him from consideration to be respected. True or false? True. Why we do this as a human being and we deprive the rights of Allah from saying 
Allah decided if you do not respect him, he will not welcome you in his paradise. If you want to be good for the people, people will reward you. But don't ask Lord from God. If you neglected God, if you denied God, if you rejected God, why do you want from God to reward you? You did this for the people, let the people reward you. Common sense or not? So please, please, don't feel shy when you are asked why. This is a logical, simple sense, okay? Is it true that the good people, if they reject God, they will not go to paradise? Yes, yes, they will not go to the paradise. Yes, because they don't want. This is not my problem. It's their problem. <laughs> they decided they don't want. Yeah, what can I do for them? <laughs> the owner of the paradise, i.e. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, has declared a condition to get in his paradise. Believe in me, respect me, you are most welcome. I came and said, I don't believe in you, I don't respect you. <laughs> Why should I be there? <laughs> is it complicated? No. no. No, it is very clear. So, ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you alimana wa and you faqihana. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us. So, please, when you ask this question, try to make it very simple, direct to the point, which was unfortunately. Not being able to answer such questions might lead the people to think that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, God Almighty, as if he is just a brutal, you know, dictator. He wants just to bring the nice people to the Jahannam, which is well, Iyad Billah Mats. True, Allah gave all of us the inner nature, the fitrah, and the revelation, the power of intellect, and he gave us the opportunity. The one who rejects him after received will be punished. So his goodness is for himself and those whom he is serving. It's not for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allahumma amin, salam alaykum.